Today I want to show and talk about the new Blazor Web App Project template in Visual Studio for .NET 8. First, let's take a closer look at the new Blazor Web App Project template. We select the project template and provide the project name on the next page. The second page of the project creation is interesting. Besides selecting the framework and the authentication type, configuring HTTPS and using top-level statements, we have two drop-downs labeled Interactivity Type and Interactivity Location. For the Interactivity Type, we have four options. None means that you only want to provide static content and don't provide interactivity. Server means that interactive components use a signal R connection to communicate with the server. The state is kept on the server for each connected client. WebAssembly means that interactive components run client side. When we select Auto, the web app first uses Blazor server to provide a fast first page load and as soon as the WebAssembly runtime is ready, the web app changes to WebAssembly and runs the interactive components client side. So far, so good, but what about the interactivity location? The second drop down is simpler than the first. We can select per page or component or global. When selecting global, the entire web application uses the selected interactivity type including the components referenced in the root component. With so many different options, I think it's best to look at code to see their differences. I created a solution with 12 projects, including all four interactivity types and both interactivity locations. In the Solution Explorer, we see that WebAssembly projects still have dedicated client projects, Therefore, the NaN and Server options are the only Blazor applications with a single project. At the time of release Candidate 2, there is an issue with the project creation. We have to move a few files before the project successfully compile. You can read more about that in the blog post announcing ASP.NET Core for .NET 8 RC2. I'm sure it will be fixed until the final release of .NET 8. Let's start with the interactivity type none. As the name suggests, we do not have interactive components in such an application. Of course, we can still load new content from the server. Still, instead of acting like a single page application where part of the application is updated, a click on a new page will load a new URL from the server, which returns a whole HTML page that will be displayed in the browser. Let's start the Blazor non-global application. When we open the developer console, you can see that there is no WebAssembly download and no Signal R connection is established. Well, unfortunately, there is a Signal R connection, but it's not the Signal R connection from Blazor, but from Visual Studio's browser link feature. The web app runs without WebAssembly and without a Signal R connection. When we navigate from one page to another, we can see that the server returns a whole HTML page for the home route. However, when we click on the weather page, we get a 200 response, but we cannot see the page content in the preview tab of the developer tools. The reason is that we use data streaming for this page. Let's simplify the code by removing the streaming rendering attribute from the weather component. It makes the web app react slower because we wait until the data is loaded and the whole HTML page is sent back to the browser. But as you can see, when we run the application again, without stream rendering, we also see the whole HTML page sent back from the server in the developer's console's preview window. I compared the two generated projects for the pair component and the global interactivity locations, and there wasn't any difference. In my opinion, it makes total sense. If we don't have any interactivity on a web app, we don't have it globally nor per component. 
I think the project creation wizard overcomplicated things a bit. The interactivity location is only relevant to the other three interactivity types. Now let's take a look at the server projects. Here we have a difference between the project using the global interactivity location and the pair component option. The global option adds the render mode attribute on the head outlet and the routes components in the app component. In the pair component option, we don't have those attributes in the app component. However, we have it on a specific component such as the counter component. Now let's start the Blazor server global app. As soon as we load the application, a persistent WebSocket connection using SignalR is started. Whenever we navigate the application or click the click me button on the counter page, a message is sent back and forth between the client and the server. Now let's start the Blazor server per component project to see if there is anything different. This time we don't have a signal R connection as soon as we access the application. Instead, we can load the home and the weather pages without starting a signal R connection. However, when we access the counter page that explicitly sets the render mode to interactive server, a signal R connection is started. Right now, in release candidate 2, we still see an attribute used to set the render mode on a per component basis. In the final release, it will be replaced with a at render mode directive. Keep that in mind. So, with the server interactivity type, we have a different behavior depending on whether we use the global or per component interactivity location. Now, let's take a look at the WebAssembly interactivity type. Again, the app component looks different between the two options. With the global interactivity location, we have the render mode attributes in the app component, while we do not have them in the per component project. Another noticeable difference is that in the global interactivity project, we have almost all components in the separated client project. That's because all components will be rendered on the client, meaning they have to be defined in the client project. In the pair component project, we have only the counter component in the client project. When we open the component, we see that there is an attribute defining it uses the interactivity type WebAssembly. Again, this attribute will be replaced by an at render mode directive in the final release. But what is the difference between those two approaches when running the application? Let's start the Blazor WebAssembly global project. After the initial load of the application, we don't see any resources being loaded in the network tab of the developer console. The reason is because the whole application is a single page application running on WebAssembly. The entire app is downloaded on the initial page load and all the code runs client side. Now let's start the Blazor WebAssembly per component project. Here, we can see that when we navigate to the weather or the homepage, which are non-interactive components, we trigger an HTTP request and get the whole HTML document as a response. When we click on the counter menu and open the interactive component, we also get an additional HTTP request and response. But when we click on the click me button, the interactivity is executed client side and the page is updated without an additional round trip to the server. For the WebAssembly interactivity type, it makes a difference whether you want to include all components in the client project and render them client side or have some of the components rendered on the server. Finally, let's look at the last and most complex interactivity type, Auto. Again, we have the same differences in the app component between the global interactivity option and the pair component option. What's special about the auto interactivity type is that the application uses the server interactivity type until the whole WebAssembly based bundle has been downloaded. In other words, 
The auto mode determines whether to use WebAssembly or Blazor server at runtime. It combines the fast first page load of Blazor server with the low latency client-side interactivity of WebAssembly. I tried to show this in action, but I couldn't find a way to demonstrate this. Please feel free to educate me in the comments down below. The difference between the global and pair component options is that with the pair component option, we get the option to have static content on pages that do not have any interactive content. With the global option, every page is automatically treated as an interactive page. Therefore, a WebSocket connection is always established in case the WebAssembly bundle isn't ready. Now, let's take a look at the other available Blazor project templates. The new Blazor Web App Project template shows up first, but there are still a few different Blazor project templates. There is a WebAssembly standalone app and an empty WebAssembly app project template. We can use those templates when we want our application to use WebAssembly as the only render mode. As the name standalone suggests, the project template doesn't have the ASP.NET Core hosted option anymore with .NET 8. It makes the most sense for applications that run on many clients and where download size isn't an issue. Also applications that can run a lot of their code without going back and forth to the server benefit from this approach. Next, similar to WebAssembly, there is a Blazor server app and an empty Blazor server app project template. We choose them when we want to implement an application that runs on an ASP.NET Core host and connects to the client via a SignalR connection. It makes the most sense for applications that should have a fast first page load and where we know that scalability isn't an issue. For example, building internal tools occasionally used by a few internal employees is a great use case. The .NET MAUI Blazor hybrid app creates a .NET MAUI application that uses the Blazor component model. It makes a lot of sense to use that application project template if you have existing Blazor components that you want to reuse in a mobile application. When recording this video, the release candidate 2 of .NET 8 has been released, which means that we are pretty sure that it is feature complete and not much will change until the final release. I'm really looking forward to all the new Blazor applications that will take advantage of the new render modes in .NET 8. The auto option is the most complicated render mode. However, it provides a lot of flexibility. For example, you can have static content on a company website where you don't need any interactivity. With the new Blazor web application project template for .NET 8, it becomes clear that Blazor can be used in many more scenarios compared to .NET 7, where it was mostly usable for building single-page applications. I believe the project creation wizard for the new Blazor web application project template isn't very intuitive. Having the choice of global or bare component for the interactivity type none doesn't make any sense. I don't know how complicated it is to build those project creation wizards, but maybe we'll see a change here in the future. Other than that, I think the new Blazor web application project template is a great starting point for building many different Blazor applications and opens up opportunities for different use cases in the future. Before .NET 8, using Blazor to build web applications only made sense for building single-page applications. But with .NET 8 and non-interactive components, we can also use Blazor for simple websites where we don't need interactivity, which means we don't have WebAssembly or a persistent SignalR connection. Let me know what you think of Blazor in .NET 8 and the new Blazor web application project template. And as always, if you made it that far, please consider hitting the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more future content about .NET development. And I will see you in the next video.